So I was still quite ill this morning, and getting to the airport was really hard work. And it didn't help that it delayed the flight for six hours because of the mountains. Finally though, we got on the smallest plane in the world, and flew very close to the mountains for about 25 minutes. And here is our awesome little plane. The airport here in Lukla is actually uphill and it's really tiny. Not only that, the temperatures dropped instantly by about 20 degrees, so it's bloody cold as well. <laughs> this is the lodge we're staying in. It's a pretty cool little lodge, except you have to pay for Wi Fi, electricity, or showers. I managed to persuade the guide to let me rest yesterday. Now I feel better. Although that does mean that we started at 8 and didn't finish until half past 4, so now I'm exhausted again. So this is quite funny, this is the traffic jams. Uh, they use donkeys to carry all the food and supplies up the mountain, which is why it's so expensive. But it does mean you get stuck in traffic jams waiting for them to cross the bridge. So while we're walking it was hot and every time we stopped it was cold, so you can't really win. Here we are at Namchi Bazaar, which is 3,440 metres, and I'm so looking forward to my climatisation day tomorrow. This is my bed, uh, we've got a blanket, plus my own blanket, plus a down sleeping bag, plus my inner sleeping bag, and my pterodactyl. This is Namche Bazaar, which is the city of the Himalayas. I seem to be getting a sore back after sleeping on the beds up here. But not tomorrow, because today is rest day. Which means that actually we're taking a 400 meter walk up to the viewpoint. And here we are, is the first view of Everest, which is covered in cloud. The cloud actually came in really thick on the way down and it got really cold, so it's great to get back down to the bottom. Then we had a look at the little free museum they've got in town, which tells you all about the area and the previous Himalayan treks. And then this evening I was invited up to the guide's house, where we had a beer and some momos. And it's really interesting to see the way they live up here. I mean, this is their entire house. So this is quite funny to start. If you look closer, you can see there's actually a kid playing in the tornado. And then here is some of the trail. You don't gain much altitude here as you walk through the national park, but it's got some beautiful landscapes. And here is Porche, where we're heading to tonight. But first we've got to head all the way down to the river down there, and then back up the other side. So this morning I felt great to the point where I actually left the guide behind like three times. But this afternoon I had crippling stomach cramps to the point where I couldn't walk without the poles, it was that excruciating. But finally up in Porche, it's a nice quiet little village. So here is my guide Saran enjoying the fresh air and the beautiful weather. Today we left Porche and did the six hour walk on to Dingbache, which is quite an easy walk and we actually made really good time. I have a bit of a headache this afternoon, that's probably something to do with the, the altitude is now at 4,900 metres. So here we are coming into Dingbache. There's actually an incredible amount of helicopters here coming and going all the time. I don't know if they're rescuing people or if they're just bringing supplies. And the traditional food of Nepal is dal bat, dal being lentils and bat being rice. But the great thing about this meal is that when you finish you can always ask for more completely free. Climatisation day in Dingbu chasing, and actually I decided to take a walk up to one of the mountain peaks at 5,300 metres. Even though I just stood still taking a video, you can hear I'm actually struggling for breath. So up here there's no noise, nothing, so you can just sit and watch these amazing mountains for hours. Oh, and here's a video of me trying to write my name in the snow. Setting off from Dingbu Chafe, started by filming a couple of yaks. I tried to get a cashier too, but I had no hope in finding that. A couple hours into our walk, and this is what our trail looks like. Just up ahead is where I stopped my morning Mars bar as well. And then here's some of me walking. The walk up here was actually very slow and very exhausting. The next clip is showing some advanced helicopter pilots flying very low and in the snow.
and then here we are at lunchtime arriving in Lobache. The distance between the camp up here are a lot smaller because of the altitude, which means it can be bored for the afternoon. So this is quite interesting. You can see on the left that at 5,500 metres there's only 70-75% to oxygen in your body. And then below you can see there's only 50% oxygen in the air. No wonder I'm finding it hard to breathe. The helicopter pilots here are really cool. They'll just fly anywhere, in any weather, and land anywhere they want. We walked up to Calapatha Peak, which is about 5,550 metres, and from there you can get a great view of Everest, although today it was covered in cloud. So just because we was bored, we decided to go to Everest Base Camp on the same day. So when the yaks finally get out of the way, here we are at Everest Base Camp, 5,364 metres. And then here you can see the ice glacier at the bottom of the mountain. It's not that cold, maybe about minus 5 degrees, and I'm in a t-shirt. Now to step another foot is going to cost you $70,000 in permits, plus a shit ton of equipment, and it's very dangerous. You could have got that glacier there, and Camp 1 is just behind that rock. Here we are back at Godok Shep, and it's now snowing. Of course, everything's quite expensive up here as well. On our way back down, Saran was quite impressed by my walking, so we decided to cut it down to two days back. Here we are in Loboche already. And then we also bypassed Dingbuche and went through this little village instead. I thought this clip was quite cool. There's uh, two helicopters landed together, dumped off supplies and sold off again. Here is the remnants of the last earthquake, a bridge that has fallen in. And this is a rhododendron tree, which is the national flower of Nepal. It's amazing some of the stuff the porters carry up here. We think we're bad with little backpacks and they're carrying maybe a hundred kilograms. And then we had what we call emergency food. This is uh, aloo, which is potatoes. Here is a quick look at some of the route as we're heading back into Namche, which is our destination for tonight. Saran very unkindly invited me to stay with him at his house tonight. And then this is the Dalbat we serve for dinner with pork. So he taught me how to eat with our hands like the Nepalese people do. Really? And here is their nephew and daughter doing it properly. Why? And here is my bed. There were six of us sleeping in one room, so we turned the seats down into beds. It was actually quite comfy and a really great experience. A quick walk through Namche Bazaar, as this is the only place that's got an ATM, so I could pay the guide. So I went on ahead and got lost because I went up some mountains somewhere when I should have gone over this bridge in Pakding. Eventually I caught up with the guide and we had a well-deserved lunch. I had a tuna sandwich, which was pretty cool because it was like a three-layered sandwich. We finally arrived in Lukla and I am exhausted. So I treated myself to a nice yak steak and a beer to celebrate. Of course some bloody Americans were also celebrating, so they were noisy as hell. Of course, it's now the 4th and my flight isn't until the 6th. So I decided to take a walk up through into the forest and have a look round, try to find a cache, but I couldn't find one. So I decided to watch the helicopters instead. So this is the airport of Lukla, and when the weather's like this, they close the airport and only helicopters can fly in and out. Later on, I went to my room and watched films, and I bought a truffle chocolate cake, which was awesome. Tried to get another flight today, but because they keep closing the airport, there's a backlog of people, so I couldn't get one today either. I do like how colourful the houses are, and this building right here is an entire hospital. So I decided to try and find this cache again today, which is about 1.8 kilometres away from the lodge. So I ended up walking deep into the forest, trying to climb up waterfalls and stuff, but I saw some pretty cool things along the way. And here's one waterfall that I tried to climb, until eventually I found a proper path. Followed this path up to the cache site, and there was bugger all there. 
So of course I've got to try out the Irish pub even though it's seven dollars a beer. The next morning I was woken up at 5.30 and told that I'm not going to be able to fly for a few days so I should buy another ticket. It sounds a bit like a con to me but I've already been stuck here a couple of days so I decided to buy another ticket anyway. The airport is usually closed but when it's open it really gets going and it's really busy. On the plane I was actually sat right at the front so I got to take a video of them taking off. Here we go saying bye bye to the Himalayas. And hello to Kathmandu. So here we are back in Tamil. I went back to my hostel, picked up the bags I'd left there for the past two weeks and organised myself ready to go down to my work away. So here's a picture of me after my trek and after my shower.